Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Casper the Boy Diviner and I wanted to show you the Blood Moon Tarot today. A lot of people have already done walkthroughs of this deck, but I wanted to do it as well, just because this was one of the decks that I felt a yearning for for a long time since it was out on Kickstarter, but I didn't back it then, which is, um, I guess I was thankful for that because it really took a long time for uh, Sam Gui to actually get it done. And once, it got, once she got it done and she opened it up for pre-orders, I ordered it immediately to send it to the, my US um, mail forwarder and then I sent it over here. So finally, um, I have this in my hands and once I received it, I consecrated it immediately, which is quite rare because I usually procrastinate. And I am so drawn to this deck. It is not a perfect deck by any means, but I really enjoy the imagery of almost all the cards in this deck. I would say that maybe the song suit is the least favorite of my suits, but it's still really lovely. So it comes in a lit in a magnetic box and it's very nice. This is the back cover, uh, the backing of the deck. This is the lovers and it is, has gold foil all over. It doesn't come with a little white book, but it does come with a little card explaining the different um, suits. Let me show you. So it does have a little write up. And then talks about, you know, the songs being cups of water, skins being fire, so on and so forth. It didn't come ordered, so I had to reorder them to consecrate it. And then I used it for a while, thinking that I don't want to do a walkthrough because, you know, this has been shown so many times. But um, after using it, I realized at this point in time, this is my favorite deck. Once I, once I started using it, it is my favorite deck now. So I really wanted to show you guys and talk about it. It comes with a little ribbon to help lift it up. And it's a very visceral deck. It is gold gilded, but the gilding is not great. I think you can see some of the cards. You can see this one has already worn off. I haven't been using it a lot. But again, this is one of the cards that is a bit weird, uh, the wheel. The printing wise, can you see that there's a color difference in the border? I don't know if it shows in the, um, in the camera, but anyway, it is what it is. So it's gold gilded, which is perfectly fine. I love the backs so much, they are reversible. Okay, and then now let's dive into the Major Arcana. The Fool, I love this. I love the in intricate doors. I do wish that maybe the coloring was a little lighter so I can take a look. But can you see the face up here, looking down? Uh, the opening of yourself, the opening of within, the actual Fool being here. But the giant doors, the hands in meditative mudras. I love this card so much. Again, all the borders are actually different for each suit. So this is the border for the uh, Major Arcana. You can see that it interacts with the image. So it is quite a beautiful border. The Magician, really like this. The many hands, there's something about it being um, attractive, uh, spider-like. The pedals, playing the, the instruments, you can see the webbing here. So there's something about this being a uh, a spider, a creator. Um, she actually writes this in her PDF that she sent to people who pre-ordered the deck and people who bought from her Kickstarter. But she is going to have a um, a shop, a web shop that actually sells the book. So the book is sold separately and will be sold later on when it's done. Uh, the High Priestess, beautiful also. You can see the skeleton, you can see the moon and the face. Are they the same person? Are they the same? Uh, that this is another incarnation of this person. We don't know, but so beautiful. The Empress, the bees, queen bee, the lush resources. Beautiful. The Emperor, I really like this Emperor. Usually the Emperor has a very um, strong, distant feel from it, but this is a very nurturing, there's an acorn, there's a, a whole palace, but he is not in the palace, he is the nurturer. He is also a nurturer, he is a protector of the, something that is growing, you know. So beautiful. The Hierophant, not my favourite Hierophant, but uh, interesting nonetheless. The Lovers, also very beautiful. Really enjoy how ambiguous they are. The moths, and then the leaves, the fruit. The chariot, beautiful. A tailor of sorts, um, sewing their magic carpet as they fly. The disparate um, cranes and birds, but all still swinging in the same direction. There's something about him having to take control. Strength. Being gentle, 
tearing apart a, a, a sword using some a bit of self-sacrifice this is a beautiful card i really enjoy the diversity in this deck as well because they don't it doesn't feel like forced whereas some cards they do feel forced or they are white people with different skin colors you know what i mean these these people all have um other traits sam really puts other traits in in their art beautiful the hermit this is a very interesting view of the hermit you know darkness glowing alone looks like me when i just get up <laughs> the wheel it's pretty simple but still beautiful justice i really like the justice the heart behind them the the birds the bird of prey the pred predator birds the sword their back turned i love this the hanged man also beautiful Maybe he's asleep. He seems like he's in a cocoon. A snake drapes around him. You must, if possible, if you get the PDF, you should try to take a read. I read most of it, not all of it. Uh, so, but I, I can't remember offhand, you know, because there's no little white book that comes with it. Death. Beautiful. The blood that becomes tears. The veil. Temperance, I love this temperance. I love the colouring, the green and the red. There's something about her, like she's harbouring some sort of treasure, you know? And then there's the heat burning within and then the coolness outside. The devil. Very beautiful. Very interesting. This makes me think of, um, you know, Beauty and the Beast and the Magic Mirror. There's something about the keyhole in the mirror, uh, the, the key in the moth. The brambles that scratches him, that really exaggerated backbone. And the brambles look like they're coming out of his skin. Are we the devil inside? Are we the true devil? Are we the ones stopping ourselves? The tower, beautiful. The faces, you know, the glowing eyes. The star. The moon, I love the moon. The masks, the many masks that we wear, the masks that, that we keep behind us in store for us. It looks like, you know, the mask actually becomes the moon, the cycle, the moon cycle. I love this. It's so beautiful, gosh, guys. The sun. So beautiful. Your heart, you know. There's something about how she draws hands and eyes and the smoke. I, and that's why this deck probably took a long, long time because of the details she puts in. The judgment. Love this card. So beautiful. The hands coming out from her hair. The art is so powerful. The world. This makes me think of uh, Baba Yaga or, you know, Ursula in Little Mermaid with the with the shell. The voice. Her voice is kept here. You know. Beautiful. Okay, that's with the major arcana. Let's move on to the minor ar minors. Uh, first, the skins suit. So skins are actually wands, so they are fiery, and I really like that. The idea of skins being wands, and and how um you know how voluptuous touch is, how powerful feeling is, and how it correlates with the wands and the passions. Uh, I really like this correlation, and I love that she uses snakes as um as a placeholder for skins because they shed their skin. But not only that, because in Chinese metaphysics. Uh, the snake animal is actually a fire animal as well. So that really, you know, makes me feel like there are correspondence for me to find. The ace of skins, the mushrooms, the snake mouth, the thickened skin, the shedding of the skin. Can you see that? Beautiful. Two of skins. Tattoos. Becoming a snake. A two-headed snake, you know. Things are growing, things are beginning to grow, things are coming to a f to, to a reality. Three of skins, beautiful, looking out, observing, the four of skins, celebration. I think this is a beautiful couple, with the fire in between them, the five of skins, being overwhelmed, you know, dealing with uh, overwhelm, dealing with um, conflicting emotions 
conflicting uh, desires, the six of skins, some sort of a uh, triumph, love the fiery crown, seven of skins, can you see that finger becoming a snake? You know, to fight others off, you might have to become a snake yourself. The eight of skins. In traditional, it's about speed. I don't really see speed here. But there, there's some power here. The nine of skins, beautiful. I love this imagery. You know, learning how to blend in, learning to hide your true self. Uh, getting ready to, to defend yourself by assimilation. Ten of skins, beautiful, beautiful. Strange imagery. You know, sometimes when you hide yourself so much, you lose yourself. This is that feeling that um, you have so much burdens, you, you, you turn, turn into something else. And the page of skins. Curious, learning, growing. The knight of skins. Queen of skins, beautiful. And the king of skins, really fiery. His finger also turned into a snake. Okay, very interesting. That is the skin suit. Let's look at the dreams suit. This is for the swords. The ace of dreams. There are a lot of uh, wolf, wolfish uh, creatures here. The moth, the eyes, the many eyes. The awakening, the two of dreams. Still sleeping, still seeing. Making a decision, listening to your intuition. Uh, the traditional moon is still here in the back, like the RWS. Three of Dreams, I really appreciate when artists now deviate from the three swords in heart imagery. So I really like this. There's something like them being tortured, you know? Heartbroken. Four of Dreams, resting. The kind of a cocoon nature in the hang of ma hangman came back. With those eyes still looking. So there's something about um you know resting but still being alert, being ready. The five of dreams. Beautiful. Betrayal of sorts. Walking away from such betrayal, learning to move on. The six of dreams. Being cradled away, being moved away. Running away from, from what hurts. The seven of dreams, seeing clearly, seeing past, past the bullshit, learning how to uh, be alert. The eight of dreams, embracing what hurts, accepting that you are in a bad situation, um, not putting up a fight. Maybe you should, but you know, the, the tongue somehow becomes his hair. There's this some sense of assimilation again. And to let you guys know, um, I think in the original art, they all line up, uh, the, the imagery. But because of the borders, you can't really see that super clearly. But they are lining up. Can you see? This goes here to the hair. So the Ten of Dreams, another beautiful, beautiful imagery. With the moth covering that death, you know, once bitten, twice shy. Once you've betrayed me, I, I, even from the dead, from the depths. Even though I'm hurt, I I will see clearer now. The page of dreams. Seeing with your heart. The night of dreams again. That cocoon kind of imagery, protecting yourself. The queen of dreams. Four arms. And then the king of dreams. Beautiful. There's a sense of the eyes and you know, always looking. And then, you know, even if you're blinded, there are other ways to see. There are other ways to feel. Maybe there's something about intuition, about something about thinking, you know, with the with the swords or the dreams imagery. Let's move on to songs. This is my least favorite suit, but still beautiful. The ace of songs. Are these tears? Are these um some sort of overt indulgence. Beautiful. Again, you can see that these are connected. 
with his neck there. Two of songs. I like the heart shape being formed. I like that they're playing on the same instrument. The three of song. Friendship. The four of song. Not sure where to look at, not sure what to focus on. Distractions. The five of song. Mending. Playing what you can. This is a broken instrument. The six of song. Memories, childhood memories. Things that were once real. And now maybe um, over romanticized. Seven of songs. Playing a beautiful tune that could distract you. Illusions, possibly. Eight of songs. Growth. Moving on from the past. You might ha once ha have had all these things, you know. But now you don't. And living and moving on with that. The nine of songs. Beautiful. The ten of songs with that heart in the hands. You know, this is um, a hyperbole. The page of songs. The night of songs, playing, up, playing music with that shell. The queen of songs, beautiful. And the king of songs, playing that music. You are your own instrument. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Just not my favorite. I don't know why I... Maybe it's the color palette. I'm not... I don't feel like it's that coherent with the rest of the deck. Um, but that's just my thought. I still love all the imagery by, by, by itself. And then let's go to the last court. Uh, the last suit. Ace of Honey. Beautiful. The pomegranate. The bee. The flower on the back. It's so luscious. How she draws all this viscous syrup. Um, viscous... Liquids, they are so beautiful. Two of honey. Beautiful decisions. Balancing, growing. The three of honey, you know, working together, being interconnected. All of us are connected. All of us um, affect each other. The four of honey, beautiful. Holding things close to yourself. Protecting yourself. Self-protection. Survival, Five of Honey, Lack, you know, um, there's a struggle here. Six of Honey, so beautiful. There's some sort of um, exchange or, or growth between you and the bees that you take care of and the fruit that you're trying to grow. It's all a delicate balance. What can you give? What can you take? The Seven of Honey beautiful again there's a sense of uh, being a cocoon in growth because if you see the other humans they all had a little bud on their lips this person already is starting to become one with the plants there's that sense of being patient and learning to to assimilate so it's very similar to some of the other imagery that i see so the same meanings keep coming back to me the aid of honey beautiful going out harvesting Appreciation, dedication, the Nine of Honey. I kind of miss like a bird of prey with the Nine of Pentacles always, but still beautiful. There's something about that, that the smoke she's letting out. Uh, she's bearing fruit compared to the others. So she has really bloomed and bore fruit. Beautiful progression. In Ten of Honey, generations, uh, separation between generations where they become the the tree this makes me think of annihilation where one of the explorers became a, a plant but yes like i really don't like when the ten of pentacles is all about you know family and happiness because that's not what i really see i see that ten of pentacles like some sort of um wall some sort of separation between generations um yeah the page of honey protective growing New growth, the Knight of Honey defenses, 
protection also, another sort of protection with the big shield he's holding. The Queen of Honey, so cute. And then the King of Honey, very green man vibes. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of the Blood Moon Tarot. It's been such a great experience working with this deck and I can't wait to shuffle it up again. Um, the cardstock is really good. I really enjoy the cardstock. It is very um, similar to a lot of the cardstock. I think it's similar to the Prisma Visions one. So if you have the latest Prisma Visions, the latest one, or the Cosma Visions, it's very like that. And I really have, have been enjoying this deck so much. If it, I'm still thinking whether I want to buy the book, you know, because I don't really need it since there's the PDF, but it's nice to have it. Okay, um, let's do a quick test reading for all of you, just in case you need it. But yeah, amazing shuffleability. Um, it does have a slight bow after you shuff riffle shuffle, but it's very slight. You can just riffle shuffle the other way to find out. To, to reorder them or uh, to make them have no bow. And then let's have a message for everyone. Okay. Let go of your past betrayals, let go of your past burdens because right now it's time for you to rest and be ready for what comes ahead. So let go of all the past burdens and the past grudges that you have because right now what is most important is for you to rest and be ready for what's up ahead. It's not going to be an easy battle, I think. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And you guys have a great rest of the day. You take care. Bye.